multivariable functions. A multivariable function, MV function, is a rule that relates multiple inputs, multiple independent variables, to a unique output, the dependent variable. And just like any other function, whether it's single or multivariable, it is single valued. So when we assign values to the inputs, one and only one output is returned. You can denote a multivariable function in a variety of ways. We'll denote it as z is equal to f of x1, x2, y, and any other independent variable. And we interpret a function like this as meaning z depends on x1, x2, y, so on and so forth in some way. For example, quantity demanded depends on price, income, and the price of a substitute good. And you may see it written out in a variety of ways. The first equation is a general no functional notation. It's just telling us that quantity demanded depends on these three variables in some way. The remaining examples give us specifics. They tell us specifically how price, income, and PS, the price of a substitute good, uh, affects quantity demanded. And evaluating a multivariable function means replacing all of the independent variables with a number or expression. For example, if z is equal to f of x, y, which equals 3x plus 2y, then when you see f of negative 1, 0, it means to substitute negative 1 in for x and 0 in for y, which in this particular case yields negative 3. If you see f of 1, 3, it means to replace x with 1 and y with 3. It comes out according to this. And we don't always have to evaluate functions at specific values. They can be expressions such as x sub 0, y sub 0. We could talk about x sub 0 plus the change in x, y 0, or x sub 0, y sub 0 plus change in y. You'll come across many multivariable functions in your economics courses. The first ones you'll most often be introduced to are the demand and supply functions, and you've already seen these in this course in your labs since the beginning of the semester. So here we have a demand equation and a supply equation. The demand equation is telling us that how much a person demands of this particular good depends on price, income, and the price of a substitute, and that how much is supplied of the good depends on the price and the wage. You'll also see it in your intermediate micro courses when you uh, are introduced to utility functions. So how much satisfaction a consumer gets from consuming goods X and Y. And of course, production functions, which you've seen before as well in this class. So this production function is telling us that output or production depends on three variables, in this case, capital, labor, and land. And then finally, you'll see multivariable functions in your econometrics courses and in the second part of this course. So generally, a regression is going to tell us that y sub i, the estimate of y sub i, is equal to this big equation where the b's are estimates of the coefficients and the x's are different variables. So let's provide an example from Romer 1993. The grade of an ith student where a is equal to 4, b is equal to 3, c would be a 2, things like that, um, depends on the percent of lectures attended of the ith student and the percent of completed problem sets of the ith student. So if a dependent variable, this z, depends on many factors, the x1, x2, y, and so on and so forth, how can we assess the effect of a change in just one of the variables? Well, to an economist, we invoke that ceteris paribus assumption, which just means hold all other factors constant. So for example, when we look at a demand curve, we say that, hey, as the price increases, quantity demanded falls ceteris paribus, holding things like income and the price of substitute goods constant. And to a mathematician, this ceteris paribus assumption is analogous to what's called partial differentiation. Multivariable calculus, partial differentiation. Economists are often interested in how one variable, the dependent variable, changes in response to a change in another variable, one of the independent variables. But most often, a dependent variable depends on many or multiple independent variables. So consider the function z is equal to f of x1, x2, x3, and y. What this tells us is that the dependent variable z depends on each of these variables.
Now, to consider how a dependent variable depends on a certain or individual independent variable, economists use the setters paribus assumption. And why? Well, by using the assumption, it identifies the exclusive impact of the variable under study rather than confounding or confusing it with other variables. And in math terms, setters paribus is analogous to partial differentiation. Let's go through some basic terminology. Partial differentiation is the process used to find rates of change between a function and one of its independent variables, ceteris paribus. A partial derivative or a partial differential of a function is the rate of change between the function and one of its independent variables, ceteris paribus. And finally, a total differential is the total effect on a function when all of its independent variables change. Let's go through the notation of each and then an example of each. Consider the function z is equal to f of x, y. The partial derivative of this function with respect to x can be written as one of the following. This is a partial derivative function. d f x, y dx, dz dx, f subscript x, x, y. Notice this little weird looking d. We use this curved d instead of a regular d because it tells us this is a partial derivative of the function. So what this tells us is the rate of change of z when x changes holding y constant. The partial derivative of the same function, but this time with respect to y, can be written as one of the following ways. And it tells us the rate of change of z when y changes holding x constant. And finally, the notation for total differential. The total differential of the function z is equal to f x, of y, x and y can be written as dz is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x times the change in x plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times the change in y. So in other words, the total change in this function z is equal to the change in z that's due to a change in x, ceteris paribus, multiplied by the change in x plus the change in z that's due to a change in y, ceteris paribus, multiplied by the change in y. And we can write the total differential uh, in other ways as well. It could be dz is equal to the partial sign z of x dx plus that partial sign zy dy. Or we could just write it dz is equal to f subscript x dx plus f subscript y dy. These are all telling us the same exact thing. Rules of partial differentiation. When given a multivariable function and asked to find the partial derivatives, follow these steps. Specify the variable of interest. In other words, what are you taking the derivative with respect to? <clears throat> Excuse me. Second, treat all other variables as contents. If it helps, box these other variables or put bars above them. And finally, use the derivative rules that you already learned to find the partial derivative. So use that power rule, chain rule, the sum and differences rule. Let's go through some examples. Consider the function below. z is a function of x and y. Specifically, z is equal to 10x squared plus 3y to the third plus x to the fifth times y to the fourth plus 90. Let's answer these questions or address these issues. Specify the partial derivative of this function with respect to x and then evaluate it at x equals 1 and y equals 2. Specify the partial derivative of the function with respect to y and evaluate it at x equals 1 and y equals 2. And finally, specify the total differential of the function and evaluate it at x equals 1 and y equals 2. So here's our function and we're first asked to find that partial derivative with respect to x. So here's what we're doing. Specify the variable of interest. We know that that's x. Treat all the variables as constants. So what that means is we're going to treat y as a constant. y is the only other variable. So in this example, what I've done is I've rewritten the function and then I've put bars above y. It's just to help me identify and to remember that y is to be treated as a constant. Then we'll use the derivatives rules. And in this case, I'm going to use the sum rule. I'm going to use the power rule and the constant rule. So I come up with the following. The derivative with respect to x of the first term is 20x. The derivative of the second term with respect to x is 0. The derivative of the third term with respect to x is 5x to the fourth 
y to the fourth. And the derivative of the fourth term with respect to x is zero, which simplifies to 20x plus 5x to the fourth y to the fourth. And finally, evaluate this partial derivative at x equals 1 and y equals 2. And it comes out to be 100. So in other words, when we're at the coordinate 1, 2, if x increases by a little bit, z is going to change by 100. Now, let's find the partial derivative with respect to y. First, we specify the variable of interest, which is our y. Then we treat all their variables as constants. There's only one other variable, that's x, so we're going to treat x as a constant. So again, I've rewritten the equation, and I'm putting a bar above x just to make me remember and to identify that x is a constant. Then we just use our derivatives rules. Again, the sum rule, the constant rule, and the power rule will be used. So the derivative of the first term with respect to y is 0. The derivative of that second term with respect to y is 9y squared. The derivative of the third term with respect to y is 4x to the fifth, y to the third. And of course, the derivative of the fourth term, that constant, is a zero. And this simplifies to 9y squared plus 4x to the fifth, y to the third. And then we can evaluate it at x equals 1 and y equals 2. And when we get that, we get a partial derivative equal to 68. So in other words, at this point, when y changes, z changes by a positive 68. And then finally, let's find the total differential, dz. All we need to do is substitute in the partial derivatives that we've already calculated. So when I do that, I come up with dz is equal to that partial derivative with respect to x times dx plus the partial derivative with respect to y times dy. Then I can evaluate it at that point, x equals 1 and y equals 2, and I come up with the change in the total function, dz, is equal to 100 times dx plus 68 times dy when we're at x equals 1 and y equals 2. Quiz yourself. Find the partial derivative with respect to x and y for each of the following functions. So pause the video and try this on your own. So for the first function, you should get that the partial derivative with respect to x is negative 30x squared plus 4y, and that the partial derivative with respect to y is equal to 4x plus 1. For the second function, you should get that the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to 1 half x to the negative half times the square root of y, and that the partial derivative with respect to y is equal to 1 half y to the negative half times the square root of x. And then finally, for the third function, the partial derivative with respect to x is negative 2y over x to the third, and the partial derivative with respect to y is just 1 over x squared.